Dear viewers, you are probably all very curious about Divine Set 1, and I know that you want me to make a meta analysis, and you want me to talk about all of the cool stuff that is in this set and show you deck lists, but that's not what we're going to be doing today. Today, I am not showing you deck lists, but the reason why is because it's still pretty early in the format, a lot of people are still cooking and experimenting, and until the lists become a bit more solved and solidified, I think I want to refrain from going over specific deck lists, but I still really want to talk about the format. And so I was watching my good buddy East. I was checking out his channel and um, after a year of a break, I actually got back into Digimon TCG recently. And so I've been watching his videos pretty actively. And he made this video about basically his early impressions of one of the uh, recent Digimon sets. And I was like, that's a very cool format. So I got into East DMs and I was like, hey, can you send me the template that the you used for this video? And he was like, sure, bro. And he sent it to me and here we are. So I basically went and made a, a little early deck impressions um, PowerPoint for you guys. And we're going to go over that today using various power scales and all that kind of stuff, which is going to be pretty exciting. So unfortunately, there's a lot of information I'm going to be showing you. And so because of that, chat is going to go bye bye. And so it's going to be just you and me for this one. But Basically, today we're going to be going over a lot of different things. Um, so these are going to be some of the decks that I plan to cover. So we're going to look over every single one of the new decks. So you can see we have Rezael, Varga, Wellstra, Direful Dolls, Greedon, Lascaria, Magnolia, Chris Ring, Kyrie. And then also I'm going to go over all of the Quick Start decks too. I haven't played with all of them yet, but I'm going to give you my general opinions on them too. So we have all of the six starter decks. And then we're also going to go over Shimna and Luard because those are kind of like the top two decks that I think I haven't really talked about yet because the last bad analysis we did was during the set 13 format. So we didn't really get to talk about these two yet. And I think it's quite worth to talk about them, especially before maybe one of them potentially gets restricted. But without the way, let's get into it. We're going to go over the decks in this order that you see. And this is basically what it's going to look like. So this is 100% a copy of what East did, but I think it was a really cool format that I want to try out myself. And so we're going to get into it as well. So I basically have a little bit of a power ranking here. So we have offense here and it's rated in stars from one to five defense, speed, removal and ease of use. So what this means is that offense is the general power output in terms of numbers and in terms of like how hard to guard it is defense is in terms of how much hand advantage it generates and how defensive the deck can be speed is how aggressive it is and how aggro the deck can go from early turns so very much about aggro removal is how much access to retire it has so specifically removing your opponent's rears and ease of use is basically how much would i recommend this to a new player so starting off with Rezael. It is a deck that has really, really good power scaling. So the offense is a four out of five. The defense is also really, really good because you're generating a lot of card advantage, especially thanks to cards like Selgaon and the orders and the order package in general. And the deck is also very fast in being able to be very aggressive because you draw your cards back if you use the order engine specifically. And so you can be very aggressive with the deck too. And it doesn't unfortunately have any removal yet. So it gets a one start there. And it's very easy to use. Like the whole deck just kind of like works on its own. You have multi attack you have a lot of card, you know, like card generating effects. You have a lot of ways to revive stuff from your drop. You have a lot of ways to add cards to your hand, search stuff from your deck. So it's a very well-rounded deck. But in my opinion, it's actually a top tier deck too. So what is fun about this deck? There's also another part from East Template. Love you, East. Thank you very much for letting me use this, by the way. But the cool thing about this deck, of course, is you have constant resource regeneration because Rezel himself revives stuff. And you also just plus a lot from your effect. So even like the Novia, for example, is a plus card. You have a strong early game and also good defense because Selgaon is a 13k booster early that adds cards to your hand while going to drop. So you can keep reviving it with Rezael every single turn and generating cards into your hand. You also have really good late game pressure because of the divine skill sending crits back to deck. So you can choke your opponent at four because all of your columns will have crits on them. And you can also just kind of like control the pace of the game. I think the challenges the sort of like maybe not lacking aspects but the difficult parts of the deck is that it is very much prone to going to time because a deck that can build both play fast in the early game and also scale it really well into the late game is 
gonna have a tough time dying. <laughs> so you really have to beat this deck up fast if you want to win fast. Otherwise, you can expect to go to time um, or go close to time. And the other thing I think that I've noticed from playing with and against this deck is that the divine skill timing can really make or break game sometimes where some people delay the effect a bit too long and then they're like, oh, I'm going to use this when I have like six crits out and then my whole deck will be crits. And then they just kind of like they get to use the divine skill to heal, but then they just kind of die um because they waited too long to set up pressure so then it's easier to like take attacks or like even you know peachy the vanguard and then they don't check two crits and then it's like well i'll just take one of these huge rears right i don't have to waste guarding this attack so i think you have to really nail the timing of the divine skill and i think that can be kind of hard because sometimes it's like well i only have four crits out but if you put those crits back that timing it can be pretty good so i think that's kind of just like how i want to go over the deck and so we'll be doing this for each and every one of them but i won't be showing deck lists just yet we'll be doing deck lists in a different video once they're a bit more settled now moving on to my favorite varga so this has been kind of my main deck as of recent until uh it was new promo comes out uh, in a week's time but Varga is the deck I play by far the most, and it's also the deck that I enjoy the most as well. So, offense, it's a 5 out of 5. This is by far the most offensive output deck out there right now, I think. Being able to do, like, minimum 4 attacks, maximum 7 attacks is obviously, with big numbers, is a very big part of it. Also, it's very fast too. Not the fastest of the decks, but it is very fast still. Um, it has relatively good defense, and you might be surprised by this because we play out cards all the time and, you know, we're trying to aggress our opponent, but almost everything in this deck says draw a card. Um, so it's like, when this attacks, end of battle, retire it, draw a card. When your vanguard stands, retire this, draw a card. At the end of battle is boosted, soul bots one, retire this, draw a card. It's like, you generate so much hand advantage that especially if you play front, the deck is actually more tanky than you think. It also has pretty good removal because it wipes out the front row on every single attack, and that is pretty good. Some lists also run the Kalgafran uh, Psycho card that technically give you access to back row removal, but right now the deck doesn't really have back row removal, so that's something you have to always be a little bit worried about, because especially if you want to tech in cards that rely on you having more rears than your opponent, like Shenli, there will be a chance that your opponent can counterplay that by just playing a full back row and you can't really touch it throughout the game without committing some CB to it. It is also, in my opinion, a very easy deck to use. Um, I generally myself quite like these kind of decks too, so very easy for beginners to jump into something like Varga. Um, what's fun about it? Almost every deck in the every card in the deck converts to a draw, basically, for the most part. You have double resend pressure, and that usually dictates the pace of the game. And you also have the potential of seven attacks per turn, but it does cost four CB because you're going through Danger Skill one CB, Divine Skill one CB, Double Shooter. That's four CB, so you only really get to do that once per game. And usually it's not recommended. I think five to six attacks is usually fine. How is it seven? So you go rear, rear, van, van, rear, rear, van. Seven attacks. So that is basically how you can do it. Um, it requires double Shura though, so you do need two of her in order for that to happen, but it does technically work. What is the challenge of this deck? So the main thing is that certain decks can deny your divine skill all game long. And this is basically, you mean, I mean, I say all game and you might be like, what? but they have to put six damage at some point. The point is that both Rezel and Dolls can play pretty lame and just give you one counter blast at a time. So you're basically always forced to just use Varga's first effect all the time because you can't use the Divine Skill if you don't have it. Or you have to pass on using the Divine Skill for a turn in order to be able to use both skills next turn. But that means you're losing out on pressure for that one turn because you're only doing three attacks. So some decks can actually deny your Divine Skill. That can be pretty annoying because you also lose out on the two Twin Drives that you should be doing. Um, and it's also very reliant on seeing great ones early to rush because you need to put in damage early to get your opponent to that four damage range so you can do the divine skill on optimally turn four sometimes turn three if your hand is really bad and you need to like dig for pgs or persona ride sometimes turn three divine skill happens and you just gotta do it but for that you gotta see your grade ones early so unlike people expected though this deck is not as trigger line as you would think um which i'm very happy about myself it doesn't really matter how you drive check because the output of this deck is so good and I also think it's very interesting. Yes, and I think especially after the new promo, Eva will be quite favored in this matchup because this doesn't retire your front row and that way you're not losing 20k shield every turn, which is pretty good. So that's my thoughts on Varga. Um, by far my favorite deck right now, and I think it is very good. I wouldn't say it's the best, um, but it's the most popular, so that's something to keep in mind. Then we have Wealthstra, Offense, 5 out of 5. This deck blows you up. Um, you go to like minus 20k against it, it's beating you up with like 5, 6 attacks a turn. It's pretty annoying. 
Um, so you have to always be kind of careful with um, playing against Wellstra. Defense is kind of crumbs. Um, it doesn't really have much defense. It has to commit all its parts to the board. It doesn't generate that much card advantage outside of like the grade two product. Um, and so therefore, you're always just like having a handful of parts. So there's like a super going first favored. It really struggles going second, in my opinion. Speed refers to early game rush in particular. I think once you get to turn three, the deck does output a lot of offense, but it's not really an early game kind of deck, in my opinion. It definitely struggles a bit in the early game. You can do like maybe two attacks or so, but it's a little bit, um, yeah, this deck deals enough damage to kill me for two games straight. Yeah, that's kind of how I think about Wallstar 2. Um, removal is very good, though. I think I could even... It's like, removal... I think I remember why I put three stars. Because removal can sometimes be five star one game, and then it can be one star the other game. Where it's like, if you just don't draw your operators, the deck does nothing. It's like, if you brick and tone draw all the operators, like the Tour and the Fryheit, and you're only operating one card a turn thanks to Ultra skill, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid you're not really doing much. Like, the deck really can be pretty sad sometimes. That's why the removal, sometimes it's a five star, sometimes it's a one star. We're gonna make it an average of three stars. And it's quite hard to use. Um, these kind of decks are quite technical. There's a lot of like little things to think about and like, it really um, rewards you if you're good at micromanagement. But I think because of that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to new players as much. But if you're into this kind of playstyle, then definitely. But it is a bit harder to use, so I have to put in that time to get used to this deck too. What's fun about it? Um, it's basically the same old, just more tools. It's the old Wellstra, but now faster and more flexible. And you do have this factor of like the turn four time bomb, where this new product is going to deal a damage to your opponent on turn four. And usually if you deal that damage when they're already at four, you can usually win that turn. So it has that kind of time bomb effect. So your opponent's often times just guarding a lot early. So their hand is not really that high. So then you can really take the tempo if you have like a strong, good turn three with a lot of pieces. But because of that, it relies on your pieces a lot, which is the biggest negative of the deck is that it's very piece reliant. If you don't draw your operators, the ceiling of the deck drops tremendously. And what ceiling means, um, if you're a new card game player, we have terms of ceiling and floor. So floor means like like how much the deck can do on a bare minimum, basically like on average. And the ceiling means like, what is the potential of the deck? You know, even when you draw all the pieces and stuff like that. So the floor for some decks like Varga is actually like pretty high because even if you don't draw a lot of parts, you're still getting like four attacks out because the Vanguard's restanding or same for Rezael. But for Wellstra, the floor is actually like, the like the minimum you can do is actually not that good if you don't draw your parts so the ceiling is very high but you have to draw your pieces for it so it can kind of just like you just kind of lose out on them playing 12 operators and still not drawing them it happens sometimes it's i don't know how but it really does happen sometimes um it also i would say struggles going second um into big removal matchups especially like varga in the mirror so going second in the mirror is honestly quite quite heartbreaking Direful Dolls, a big surprise deck. Offense, three stars. It's pretty good, not as crazy as Wellstra, but still quite, an, quite a good offensive output deck, especially once you get to like the multi-attack turns with the um, Prividenza. Then Defense, this is by far the tankiest deck in the format. It's sometimes you cannot even deal one damage to this while doing five, six attacks a turn. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, the speed is not that great. This deck doesn't really have an early game because it needs to kind of dedicate all of its parts to the turn three and beyond. Because a lot of the effects say if you have a direful doll, great three Vanguard. And so therefore they're kind of restricted in their use. Has no removal and it is pretty hard to use because you have to basically balance your resources across what four different zones. It's like soul. Guardian Circle, Drop, as well as Field, essentially. And I guess Hand, you could even add that too. So what's fun about it is this specific aspect. You're all, always cycling your Direful Dolls between your Soul, Drop, Rears, Bind, and Guardian Circle. Oh yeah, right, Bind Zone, sorry, that was the fifth one. Um, it is by far the tankiest and most defensive deck in the format. And you can also do four to five attacks per turn or just three to set the pace of the game. So sometimes you're just doing three attacks, right? You're swinging Rear to do your triple drive and then you're passing. Like, you don't want to deal them any damage. Sometimes you swing rear, deal them the one damage. Oh, sorry, you swing rear, drive check some stuff, and then, like, kind of, like, pressure them with, like, a lethal swing or something on the side. So, it can be really, really good at just setting the tempo, which I think is very important. The only thing is that it is quite setup reliant, and also has a pretty slow early game because of what I mentioned with a lot of effects needing a grade 3 Direful Doll. And if you whiff the right line grade 1 especially, 
it's kind of it, it can be drove over pretty fast because the ride line of uh, the grade one ride line when you ride over it, it looks at the top seven and puts two direful dolls from among them into your soul so especially these two providenza in, and liberata are the most important ones if you don't see them it can be tough it can really just be a disaster so you really want to make sure like if you with your the ride line it can be really tough another thing is um it can be aggro down and also struggle to stabilize so usually when i play against direful dolls myself right now i've been playing bargain tournaments i go ham i'm rushing turn one rushing turn two rushing turn three i try to win by turn four and it's like as long as their hand is going down on average every turn even if they're guarding from the bind zone over and over and over again i am trying to push them down as fast as possible and so that's kind of like your main counterplay against this deck too but it's really strong it poops like it poops rears from soul onto rear it puts those cards you know into the bind zone you guard with them and then you put the cards in your drop back into the soul you're doing triple drives like you're generating so much advantage you're doing multi attacks this deck is really really good um but yeah if you want to beat it you got to go fast greed on another big surprise from this set greed on is actually a very very good deck too i think in terms of offense it's pretty high as well so i gave it four stars out of five pretty good offensive potential but a bit trigger reliant so sometimes that potential can kind of fall off defense is relatively good it got a lot of cars that actually have plus 5k shield which is also very nice it's a slower deck though in my opinion especially early game it doesn't really do much i feel like you kind of wait till you go into your um greed on masks and then the game kind of starts it has a bit of removal there is a card that says when you put it to soul from rear you can retire an opponent's rear so it has a bit of removal and it's quite easy to use i would say not like the easiest because you do have to sometimes think about how you're gonna like kind of like prepare for the next turns and make sure you always have your you know direful dolls oh uh, no sorry not direful dolls your desire devil sorry they both start with dd just like Derek dow but what's fun is of course the new support this card in particular is really good it essentially lets you just energy blast three to call a desire devil from your drop with oh, sorry from your soul with a different name from him to your rear so anything you put into the soul the previous turn you can just call out you can even call out the greater one of your rod line as well and then guard or strike your opponent for the whole turn too which is really good and so this takes into the next point where you either commit cb to extra drives or to constantly guard or strike your opponent and both of these can easily win you games you kind of look at how many triggers you have left on like which one you should use and it also got more defensive options than before and of course it doesn't die until you hit seven damage which is also another fun part of it um the challenge is that it doesn't it just doesn't do anything if you don't go into grid on masks um it really hurts also whiffing your searches can really really hurt like if you whiff the masks if you whiff greed on masks like uh, desire devil search it can be also pretty tough too um and essentially if you drive check blank 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 um it can be bad but like, like if you don't check triggers when you need them it can hurt and if you don't find your pieces from drive checks for your follow-up turns it can also hit like a wet noodle too so i don't think the deck is like tier one but i do think it's like a tier two deck i think it's quite good and i've especially been playing against builds that have that play like the guy that comes out of soul when you're vanguard attacks and also they abuse the guard restrict on the ride line which i think is really really strong so i think this we will see greed on topping and i've seen it in tournaments a lot more than before too so i think people are kind of realizing that this card is actually very very good and uh waking up to the greed on train but Moving on, a new ride line again for Sokia is Lascaria. Her offense is a bit lacking at two stars, but it is one of the most defensive decks in the format, being able to use multiple Blitz Orders a turn, which is brand new. Early game speed is not that great and has no removal, and it's okay in terms of its ease of use. I think you have to really know how Vanguard's pace and tempo is dictated in order to play this deck well, so that is, I think, what makes it a bit harder to play because your fundamentals have to be quite good to succeed with this deck in my opinion so what's fun about it is that it's the first deck to ever allow the player to use multiple blitz orders per turn which i think is very cool and it also has multi-attack and crit pressure to provide just enough offense in order to compete but it has some challenges it really relies on the archetype so everything has to be the verano archetype in order for her to give the crit to herself so if you don't have enough cards of her archetype on the board she doesn't fulfill her effect which is really annoying and because of that you have to max out a lot of those cards which means that you actually have way less space in the deck for deck building and most of the freedom in deck building goes into like your ride deck choice so stuff like your you know like running like the zorga ride line and stuff like that can be pretty good and also the firepower of the deck is kind of low it's like she gives 5k to all of your Rareno units and you know she gives a crit to herself and she does a multi-attack with this guy that's about it so 
you know, obviously for a defensive deck, if the firepower is too good, it's a bit, you know, it can be an, an issue. But I do think that, oh, somebody in China is saying her firepower is not low. I don't know. I've played against this deck a few times now, and every time I just felt like it's very tanky, but she doesn't output enough offensive potential. So she's never killing me. I'm never losing to Vireno. I'm losing to double loss in time. Like, games just go to time against Verena all the time, and we just both die in time, and it just kind of sucks for both players. <laughs> so, I think she could use maybe a bit more support, um, but I think the deck is still quite fun, and um, especially defensively, very cool. Magnolia, um, I think offensively, is very, very strong, very, very fast, and, and uh, you know, hits pretty hard, especially Magnolia Masks can just, like, go second and kind of, like, win. Um, but the main support this time was Magnolia Elder, Defense is okay. Defense is very, very reliant on you finding Inlet Pulse, though, so that's something to keep in mind. And the speed is pretty good, too, because you can play relatively aggressively early, in my opinion. Um, it has a bit of removal if you do run Magnolia Masks, which, of course, once per game, you can basically use that. And it's relatively easy to use, I guess, as well. Um, so, defense is very high for Mask. I think defense is high for Mask, yes, but it's not high for... Um, Elder as much. I think the Elder one really relies more on uh, drawing in lip pulls. And this breakdown focuses more on Elder because that's the main archetype being supported here. I've just kind of put in Mask here just to kind of remind you that this exists. So yeah, so there is the promo that, that Mask's got, but this set mainly focuses on Elder. So overall, um, Magnolia's gotten a lot of support that has made both builds quite strong. It used to be just that Mask's was really good, but now Elder is also actually quite good too. Um, and now Elder has even more ways to rebuild the board with this card and reuse Inlet Pulse every turn, which is also very important. So this card basically can bring out, you know, like <laughs> essentially two Inlet Pulses, if I'm not mistaken, right? So it's um, it's pretty good. Oh, sorry. I mean, it, it's, it needs to be a different name from this. So it can basically just bring back your, uh, bring back your Inlet Pulses every turn. And there's so many ways to bring back Inlet Pulse, and now you're just like drawing cards all the time, and it's pretty good, especially because you can ride skip too. So overall, that's kind of like the, the, the fun parts of it. Um, the challenge is that if you've looked at the topping list for Magnolia Elder, um, the red line doesn't do much. You're usually running 0 and 1 Rotowa, and then Grade 2 is the promo that lets you uh, ride jump into Elder. So your ride line isn't really doing too much, um, and you have like a dozen of ways to revive Inlet Pulse, but you're still reliant on finding that inlet pulse in order to keep the hand advantage going. So that's, in my opinion, the, the important kind of like part that's uh, important in, when discussing this deck. So I think Magnolia is quite good. Um, definitely one of the less explored decks from the ones I've introduced so far. So this one might change quite a lot as um, Elder keeps being more um, like more developed, I guess. But yeah, it's like what Toyo says in chat. Sorry, I know YouTube can't see the chat, but it's like this deck is tiered, but it's like we haven't figured out the list for it. So I think I think it has a lot of potential. So that's why I like take these with a grain of salt. I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video. Like this is just my impression of all of these decks. Um, these this isn't gospel. This is just me kind of like how I see them. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. But you know, this is just me adding to the discourse. Chris Rain. So this is the lyrical deck that I actually am very surprised by how good it is. So. Offense is actually pretty damn high, um, just because she always is a 28k with a crit, if not 38k on Persona Ride, and she also can pass that on with her Divine Skill for an extra attack. Her defense is okay, it kind of depends on the build for it, but I think that a lot of the time it's like, your because the Divine Skill is only once per game, you can bounce back a lot of your pieces back to hand and then your defense is good for one turn, but other than that it's kind of like, alright. Uh, the speed of the deck is also pretty okay, like if you open Yuika and stuff you can aggress pretty well, um, but sometimes it can it, it can be kind of peace reliant on whether the speed is good or not. She does not have removal and she's relatively okay to use. I say like average. Um, what's cool about her is that she can both be used as her own deck, but she can also be used as a grade three in Petralka. So Petralka, of course, is the grade three Highlander boss unit for Lyrical Monasterio. So whether it's a standalone deck or just as the grade three Rodland in Petralka, she's a powerful, self-sustaining boss unit. And, in my opinion, has access to one of the best guard restricts in the game, which is this grade 1, Raomu. So, if you don't know what she does, she lets you energy blast 3 when she boosts Chris Rain to essentially, as long as you have 4 more different units on the board, force your opponent to either PG, or if they don't PG, they have to guard with 3 different grades at the same time. And for a lot of decks, that's very hard. Because a lot of decks, they might bloat a certain grade and then have less of the other grades in the deck. So, for example, like, Varga doesn't struggle against this too much, but... 
for maybe something like Luar that runs less great twos, this could be something like a bit of a, a deal breaker sometimes. So I think that that's something that's pretty important to think about too. And it also has this like constant crit pressure and you always have this like risk of the divine skill, right? Even if they don't use the divine skill, there's this like, oh my God, what if this turn they're gonna divine skill me? Like the way you calculate how you're gonna guard a turn changes so much on depending on if they swing rear first or vanguard first. And sometimes they can bluff you by going rear guard swing, see how you guard and then go vanguard swing and then rear guard swing pass. But then sometimes they'll go rear guard swing, see how you guard or see how you, your first damage is, and then go rear guard swing, vanguard swing, divine skill, boom, two more attacks. It's like it this, the risk of the divine skill feels the uh, about as scary as Vargas, I would say, um, because it can really change the pace of the game completely. The challenge, of course, it is a three attack deck outside of divine skill turn. I feel like it would be too good if it wasn't because of how good she is as a boss unit and. The CC options are limited. This is something I particularly felt that her main counter charge options are essentially the great three from Felty. So the ghost that when placed from deck lets you CC one. And so if you use Forbidal, you can call that out in counter charge. Um, and then also if you call it from deck, I believe from her effect that also uh, Ingrid, yeah, that procs with her effect too, if I'm not mistaken. So. The counter charge options are a little bit limited, and I feel like once we get more of those, the deck will get better. So that's something to keep in mind. But that's Chris Rain. Uh, Kyrie also got a new grade two as well, and I feel like we didn't really talk about it too much either. Um, pretty good offense, okay defense, pretty low. Like early game is like if you have Yuka or not, but you can't like willy nilly spend soul in this deck too much because of the fact that a lot of other effects use soul. Um, so speed is a bit lower, no removal and relative okay ease of use. Um, Kyrie's grade three turn improved a lot in this set thanks to her. So this card basically says that um, when she's placed on rear, she gets boost and gets 5k herself. And at the end of the turn, she count us one and sends herself to soul to draw a card and then bounce your rear guards back to hand equal to your vanguards for every two grades of your vanguard so if you're on the grade four Kyrie, you get to bounce two so this way and if you're on the grade three Kyrie, you get to bounce one but she still draws a card and provides salt at the same time and there's also the card from the last lyrical set that basically lets you stand a column even on grade three Kyrie. so this is like a very big support for the grade three turn which used to be her worst part where her grade three almost felt like a vanilla at some times um so grade three turn got improved she is now able to ride jump via her PR and also like recent support lets her rebuild hand really, really well. The problem is that she counter blasts so much now. It's like this counter blast and this counter blast and it's like every other support counter blast. So it's like everything that you play, like if you play Melty, that also counter blasts. So it's like so much CB with so little counter charge, which can be a bit of an issue sometimes. Um, and she is also a bit slower and a bit more peace reliant than other lyrical alternatives like Prisms or Charmot that you could be playing, or even Chris Rank, right? So I think Kyrie is definitely a, a deck that you should be aware of from this set, but it does feel like it is lacking in that CC department a little bit. And as a, as a Toyo says in chat, this deck is simultaneously the best and the worst deck I've ever played. And I kind of, I kind of agree from just playing against it too. Then we move on to the quick start decks. We'll be, we'll keep this pretty easy and quick because um, these decks are not very well developed yet. I just kind of wanted to give them a feature for all the new players tuning in that want to build these decks and upgrade them. So Triumph Dragon is the one for Dragon Empire. It basically lets you um, Energy Blast 4 to retire an opponent's rear and get 5k in a crit. And the support kind of also gains a crit and also puts crit onto your other rears. So offense for this deck is surprisingly not as high as I'd like to put it because the power gain is not that high. It's just the crit pressure is there. So it's kind of awkward when this rating is more about like power and how hard to guard they are. Um, defense is also, there's not that much draw power in this deck, so the defense is not that great. Doesn't really have much of an early game. Does have pretty good removal, it's like a once per turn removal, it's not super great, but it's okay. And it's very easy to use, I mean, these decks are, all of these quick start decks will have a easy, ease of use, 5 star ranking. So, what's cool is that it has a crit pressure on all 3 attacks, so Vanguard has crit pressure, this has crit pressure on turn 4 and onwards, and she also gives crit pressure on your Persona Ride turns and you Persona Ride every turn because your Grade 3 searches Persona Rides. But um, this, as a result, you'll notice all of these cards have CB written on them. So 
It's quite Karawas heavy. It doesn't really have much draw power outside of searching your Persona right every turn and this getting a draw one on place. Um, it starts to fall off after you use up your Persona Rinds because you do search Persona on every single attack. Oh, sorry, no, on every single turn. So if you damage one of your Persona Rinds, it's just like, well, that's a whole turn of this deck just kind of gone. And like cards like this rely on you having Persona. This relies on soul blasting your Persona copies too. So it's really tough if you run out of Personas and it slightly overuses Energy Blast because this thing Energy Blast 4, so that means that if you want to use the generic cycle card, that means that you're basically not going to have enough energy to use the Vanguard skill every turn. And that's kind of weird. I'm not super happy about that. Um, and I think that that's in a, you're going to see these two as recurring issues throughout these um i was breaking out these decks and yeah you can play the the uh regulus piece that is the the, the grail that gives you persona right for sure um but there's definitely the lacking aspect of triumph dragon and then also the largest i think is a bit better um it has higher offense because there's four attacks that give crazy amount of power too um lower on the defense because not as like it has a bit more draw power but still nothing too crazy not much early game no removal and of course very easy to use so Again, keep in mind we're talking about these decks in the vacuum of set 1. They do have support in set 2 that fixes the issue of Persona Rides being used up, but this is for set 1. We can revisit them in set 2 as well, but that's going to be for another time. So, what's good about this deck is it does 4 attacks every turn thanks to Osa Largest himself. I also, today I learned, his English name is Osa Largest. <laughs> you know, it's like, is he really just Largest Osa? Like, okay, dude. Um, he has pretty good draw power because he does send cards to soul or call from soul basically and then you could potentially overcall your arrears but you have draw power from this guy being sent to soul he um, basically lets you soul blast two cards that aren't himself to draw a card and then this thing when it sends a card to your a rear guard to your soul he draws a card too so you get to draw a bunch of cards which is pretty good honestly especially for a quick start deck so this is probably one of the best quick start decks if you want to upgrade it and of course you persona right every turn but it is very peace reliant because you need to have these two cards at all times otherwise you're minusing yourself and overcalling your rears um and again these two issues energy blast being overused and falling off after persona rides are used up is going to be a recurring one too astrum is much more offensive because you have a lot of power scaling in a lot of these cards i mean the order itself basically gives power to all of your rears like that standby effect of your Ash uh, your, of your astrum defense is non-existent everything is a piece there is very little draw power you don't get anything for playing your orders it's literally a minus from hand the only draw power is basically this guy um so defense non-existent this is a very glass cannon deck speed is okay it's not that early game focus but sometimes just because of how glass kind of it is i think by default you kind of just smack down your part as long as you have pieces for the restand turns no removal and um ease of use very high so you can do potentially five attacks because basically he stands a rear and then this thing says when he's uh stood by an ability soul blast you to give him plus 2k and if you soul blasted ash term you get to um stand himself so Basically, when your other rear guard stands, he stands as well, so you can get to do five attacks. High offensive potential, because, of course, he gains a bit of power. The order, the more of them you play, the more power you give out too, and the red line surges two of them, so that's already pretty good. And you person right every turn. Defense, though, is one of the challenges. It's non-existent, not much shield, like it, all, none of these cards we're featuring here have shield on them, and you have to really commit a lot of your pieces, and, of course, the two shared issues from before as well. Set of Sale, I think, might be the best if you really fully update it. Even better than Oset Largest, I think. So, Set of Sale has, in my opinion, the highest offensive potential because the scaling is actually quite good because he himself gives plus 10k to the thing he calls and he also has a cycler that gives power and the support card gives power. So, it's like everything is extra power. Defense is okay like you have um the fact that you call from drop that makes things um a little bit more defensive so it's kind of like a keter pile deck yeah so it really depends on the build for the defense speed is pretty good you can also use um cell going in this <laughs> so it's an expensive uh card in japanese which hopefully will not be expensive in english um and hopefully it's just like a sneak promo that's easy to get or box topper would be also nice um and no removal and very very easy to use so 
basically for Zeref sale. The fun part is that, of course, when fully constructed, this might be the best one because you have potential of five attacks every turn thanks to Carbre being an on place, essentially, call a card. So it's pretty good for that reason. And you persona right every turn. And because you use superior calls from drop, you're not as affected by removal matchups, and you also save on cards from hand, which is also very good. Um, it is very peace reliant though, so if you don't have Carbre, you can't do five attacks, and it sh still shares the other two issues of the other decks, especially here if you run out of energy, you're just a three attack deck, which is pretty sad. So finally we have Christianos, well not finally, he's the second last one. Offense is all right, he doesn't really give out power unfortunately, um, this is your strongest rear card essentially. Defense is pretty good, purely for the fact that you don't really call from hand much, you basically call from Christianos all the time. Speed is not super high, um, just because you don't really have the parts to sustain. Um, you can technically call out some of the early parts that you want to be removed to call from drop later, so that is an approach. Um, no removal, and ease of use is very high. Dean saying, alright, again, I'm gonna repeat myself, this is just my opinion, this is just my experience, I actually did play a little bit with Christianos, um, I did not feel his offense to be that crazy. Um, got destroyed by Nectar. Oh, I guess you could kind of build with like the orders. So I think, yeah, this is the quick start decks. This rating is definitely the one that could easily be completely different. This is just my very, very little impression from like the one or two games I've seen of these decks. So the hand feels pretty good because you call from drop. Um, the power of your three attacks is relatively decent as long as you have the double rare guy or her and or i guess orders and you do persona right every turn it is a three attack deck until turn four and the thing is other three attack decks like triumph dragon have crit pressure to boot this is a three attack deck with nothing else to make up for it until you start to multi-attack on turn four which is unfortunate super peace reliant if you don't see this dude you can just say goodbye and of course the other two shared issues and finally for Lyrical, we have a Marlene. So Marlene has, in my opinion, pretty good offensive potential because she herself also powers up your rears that she calls and her support rears also give extra power. Her generic cycler also gives out power to your front row, so it's pretty good. Defense is nothing too fantastic. Speed is also, like if you play Yuika, I guess it's okay. No removal and pretty good ease of use. So she does consistent multi-attacks. She could potentially search your deck for PGs and clone them through the ride line, which is pretty good. Uh, relatively high offense and of course you persona right every turn, but it's surprisingly CB heavy because as you see all three of these cards are pretty counter blast heavy and you don't have as many counter charge options that are generic in Lyrical um, and doesn't generate much advantage unless you invest to the expensive Lyrical staples. So to tell a new player to buy four Yuika, four Valshablan is like a bit tough. Um, so I think unless you really put in the the funds this going to be a little bit uh a little bit tough <laughs> to generate advantage but yeah her ride line is really really good that's why i wanted to highlight that in the fun parts but then the other two issues are kind of shared as i always mention but then finally we have shiranui the shiranui and luar the two kind of kings of the format that a lot of these faded ones kind of came in to fight against and surprisingly they are able to fight against them but you're gonna see that the the stats on these dudes are kind of crazy i think i gotta pop up the chat here for a second because like look at this <laughs> it's me really seven attacks somas one reset extra pg to head for simi one unstoppable can bypass ladder five drive checks insane sustain brain dead grade two game ot to win solos every event based but there's a lot of stars, yeah, so offense, Shiranui is crazy, like, it's crazy scaling. Relatively good defense because you drive check and search the deck a lot and Shenri is just a busted card. Um, very good early game because of the Shoujo Doji ride line. Insane removal, you can board wipe your opponent pretty easily through, I mean, not just board wipe, it's like the way the Dominate is designed forces your opponent to not call cards that would backfire and so therefore the removal is pretty damn good too and ease of use it's surprisingly easy to use your your cousin can probably play shiranui and top with it at an event so this is this is like one of those gacha who's tier list and then the five star limited character reviews is at the end yeah basically so essentially shiranui can do seven attacks on um magun tenbu stride turns um, it can have a very strong early game thanks to Shoujo Doji, sorry, not, not grade 3 ride line, we gotta fix that. Alright, that's more like it, Shoujo Doji grade 2 ride line is the reason for the really good early game. And also, of course, you have insane removal thanks to the strength and dominate itself. So, Shiranui 
He is definitely the best deck in the format, but surprisingly it still has some challenges. Bracing Angel Ladder does make the deck have a first try turn without doing anything, because you basically give untargetability to all of your rear guards and your opponent can't really do anything about it. Um, Self-retiring decks turn off the first try turn two, so basically if you have something like Varga popping all of its own units, you give your opponent their first stride with none of your rears on board and they cannot call anything with Shirunui Oboro because they don't see the beginning of their ride phase on their first grade three turn, so they can't call anything yet. So that's pretty huge. And I'm pretty sure this guy will be choice restricted in the next restriction list. So that's gonna at least turn off the early game for this deck. So I think that's one of the challenges. Also, in Japan, um, it needs an expensive promo. <laughs> so that's also another kind of limiting factor for the deck too. But that's Shirunui, <laughs> lots of stars. Lord gets quite a few stars too, but of course it has no removal. And I think it's very hard to play as well at the optimal level. So the stars go down here a little bit, but offense super high. Defense is pretty good thanks to Selgaon. And also um, speed is very high thanks to Selgaon. <laughs> Basically, this one card, this one card just does everything for this deck. It's crazy. This dog, who, who invited this dog, bro? He's too good. In case you don't know what Selgaon does, um, when it boosts, if you either played an order this turn or if you have more rears than your opponent, he's a 13k booster, which is already really good, especially early game. But also at the end of the battle, he retires himself to look at top two of your deck and add one of them to your hand and bot deck one of them. So this also funds your ritual count in Luard on top of being a recyclable card that you can put back to your deck with Luard skill and keep calling out with Luard skill and keep plussing with Selgaon every single turn. So, uh, yes, this dog is really good. <laughs> Who let this dog out, bro? He's way too nice. But what's fun about Luard is that you're constantly deck searching, you're constantly recycling cards, and it very much feels like Luard did in G. Like, this, especially after the dog came out, really feels like G-era Luard to me, like the early G-era Luard, um, where you're just, if you enjoy that game plan, like, you're gonna have a great time with this. Fantastic early game thanks to Selgaon. Incredible offensive output through the strides. So of course, you're doing like four attacks on your first stride turn. You have insane guard restrict thanks to Drag Strider too. Like this cannot be um, overstated. I think the guard restrict is really, really strong this time around too. But it does have some challenges. Main one is, I mean, this is a two line sentence, but it can basically be summed up to skill issue. Um, this requires good micromanagement skills. Otherwise, deck potential is quite limited. I am one of the sufferers of skill issue. I play Luard. I forget to put back my ritual cards from the stride skill and put too many Selgaons back. And then I go into Drag Driver and I attack and I call Morfessa. And then I drive check all of my remaining ritual pieces, and then I swing with Morfessa, I try to search for ritual cards. Oh no, I didn't put back enough ritual cards, and I just drive check my last ritual target. Now my Morfessa doesn't do anything. Oh no. So sometimes if you're not good at like micromanaging your whole deck, you just it just blows up on its own. It's like, whoops, I guess I don't get to do another attack now. I just wasted a CB. So that can be a limiting factor, in my opinion, honestly. And that's why I put ease of use to one star because it's hard. <laughs> Please understand. And um, there's also the fact that Salgaon can be counterplayed if you're not running the order build of Luard. And there is an order build that came second at Japanese Worlds. Um, so basically, if you play a lot of rears in the early game, Selgaon doesn't work. And that can be pretty good because it turns off the early ritual count, turns off the early pressing, so this like speed stat kind of just goes down. So there is counterplay, so that's something to think about. <laughs> Make that into a YouTube short? Honestly, I might. But anyway, that has been all the decks from set one plus the two top dogs, haha, <laughs> uh, from this format too. But what is it in general? I think we want to, I want to just quickly talk about um, just my kind of thoughts and some predictions and all that kind of stuff. And I also want to pull my camera down a little bit here next to Rezael. So overall, my thoughts on this format, basically all four of the faded ones ended up being meta contenders. I think literally all four of the of the divine skill users are good decks um, that you can easily compete with. The surprise one is definitely Direful Dolls. So I think me and Kai, we play tested Direful Dolls after thinking it was going to be a mid deck. And then we were like, 
oh my god, this is actually insane. <laughs> so it was a very quick realization of like, hold up, this thing is actually kind of good. Um, the only issue is that we might not see Direful Dolls too much in tournaments because the mirror matches will definitely result in double loss and going due to overtime. Um, Shibna and Luard are still at the top, but Luard is starting to fall off a bit just because people are playing a lot of Rezael. Um, and I think also it's just people are learning how to counterplay Luard and like Salgon and stuff like that too. Um, and also we have, you know, like Varga's popularity in Prism existing pose a threat to Shudanui by default because these are both decks that clear their own boards and pass on nothing for Shudanui to dominate for their first stride. Um, the quick start decks all need some work, so they probably won't shut for a while, but I think set two will make them a bit better. And I think my prediction for what will go up is I think we'll see more Greedon. I think we'll see more Magnolia. These two decks are very under under researched, I would say. Youth is another deck that people are sleeping on. I think it's very, very good. Rejeweled, honestly, too, as well as Leonorn. I think those like the top tier decks of the set, set 13 format, I think have gone down in usage because everyone's trying out new stuff. But once people get kind of bored of the new stuff, they'll just go back to some of these top tier decks like Youth and Leonorn. We might see an uptick of them too. And I think from the current promo pack, the biggest winner is definitely Rorowa. And I think the next promo pack releases on March 1st here in Japan, which is in just a week basically. And that is going to have uh, really good promos for a lot of decks, including Eva. So I expect to see that uptick as well. So those are my thoughts on this early meta, this early format, which I think is overall very, very fun. I've been really enjoying the first Divines meta and so I'm very excited excited to see where it's going to go from here and how it's going to change even before the release of DZBTO2 as well. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Uh, it took quite a long time to make this and uh, prepare the PowerPoint, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again to Ease for letting me use his template. If you liked it, I'll do it again. So let me know in the comments if you did. Um, very important this time that you do comment and let me know. Otherwise, it, it took a bit too much effort, <laughs> so I might not do it again. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. That also lets me know that you like this kind of content and i can make more of it in the future too and of course comment down below as i said before subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to get access to some bonus content and support the channel and the things that i do consider becoming a youtube channel member as it directly supports the channel but with that that is going to be it for me today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye